Good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you here this morning in person and online today. Uh, if you're here in the sanctuary, I invite you to look, look around and say hello to everybody around you. Say good morning. God's peace be with you. If you're online, it's great to see you as well. Jody, welcome to our online uh, live stream of the Sunday service. And I invite you, all of you online, to share the peace of Christ and use the chat stream and use the emojis to interact. And that way you know and you feel like you're not just watching by yourself, but you're part of a community that is worshiping together online. You can also share prayer requests anytime during the service as well. Uh, if you're here in person, I invite you to stand. Uh, if you're able, and our worship assistant will lead us in the call to worship. Come and worship Christ, the visible image of the invisible God, the firstborn of creation, the eternal God, the one through whom all things were created, and in whom all things are held together. This is our God. Let's worship him together. Almighty God, we pray that you would give us the knowledge and insight that comes from you alone. May we know your will in all things, and may our lives bring honor to your name. We admit and confess today that we need you. We believe your power, the same power that raised Christ from the dead, lives in us, and you are more than enough. Strengthen us with your infinite power, according to your glorious might, so that we would have everything we need in life to endure. Be patient and finish well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, this first song we're going to sing is about how we give thanks to God for God is good. So as we sing this, I invite you to put your hands together and clap in celebration, even as you join together in singing. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise with a mighty hand. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing. Praise. sing Praise forever, God is faithful. Forever, God is faithful. Forever, God is strong. Forever, God is with us. Forever, forever, God is faithful. Forever, God is strong. Forever God is with us forever. Forever. From the rising, from the rising to the setting sun, this love endures forever. Grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures for us. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Come on, sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. God is with us forever. Forever God is faithful. 
We praise God. You know, one of the reasons we give thanks, the main reason, is that God has expressed His love for us in the giving of His Son. So as we sing this song, pray that your heart would be filled with thanksgiving for the amazing gift of God's love. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. God, we give thanks to you. This morning as we gather together, we remember of all the blessings, the wonderful things that you have done in our lives. And we give you praise, thanksgiving, and worship. We pray that your Holy Spirit stirring us in the worship of you already, I pray, would continue to work in us so that you might work through us the rest of this week. We pray, O oh God, that you would be praised and glorified, not just in our song, but in all that we do the rest of this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please have a seat, everybody. Well, let me share a couple announcements with you. First of all, 
If you have not already, I invite you to please check in for the service. Uh, you can do that by going to our website, delranumc.org, on any device. Uh, there's a button near the top that says check in, and if you click or tap that, uh, you can fill out just a little bit of information there to let us know that you're participating uh, in the service today with all of us. Uh, if you're a regular here, all you got to do is put your name in and maybe others' names if you're checking in for them. Uh, if you're a guest here, we invite you to fill out your contact information. Uh, that way you can keep in touch with what's going on in church. Um, we have a team at the church called the Nominations Committee. And each year, this team looks to find and identify, deploy, evaluate, and monitor the ways in which we are serving the church and serving the community. So if you'd like to serve the church in a different way than you're already serving, or in a new way, you have a new idea, or if you're not already serving the church and would like to start, then you can talk to me, you can talk to our lay leader, uh, Bob Blazewitz, or you can email the church office at any time. Um, the first Sunday of every month, we celebrate Holy Communion together, and that's next, next Sunday. Uh, for each Communion Sunday, we have the opportunity to give a communion offering, and this is uh, above and beyond our regular giving, and the communion offering, what it does is it's targeted towards funding various ministries in the church uh, throughout the year. Next Sunday, the first Sunday of August, the communion offering will be targeted towards welcoming ministries. So I want to invite you to give and to pray for people to discover and to join our church. Uh, if you're giving online, all you got to do, if you're using Tithe Lead, you just got to go down and select the option that says it's a communion offering. If you're using PayPal, I'm sorry that there's no option in that software to do that. Uh, of course, if you're giving in person, you can use one of the communion offering envelopes uh, outside on that table. Uh, but I want to thank you always, each and every one of you, for giving in the various ways that you do, uh, giving in love and in faith. And finally, I want to thank you each and all who've been helping out and supporting our Kids Summer Mondays, our version of VBS this year. I've got a few pictures to show you. I think three slides with a bunch of pictures. So here's some of the, the shots from uh, our time together over the past month or so. Uh, that's one. There's, our theme was Be Strong and Brave. And here's another one. You can get a, an angle of uh, all the wonderful things that are happening. Uh, and then the final, uh, we've got some activities that the children were doing as well. Uh, somebody with a mustache, yes. Um, so uh, I want to thank you all again, and let's continue to pray and support uh, our young children to be disciples of Jesus Christ. All right, you can check out our bulletin online for any and uh, other announcements uh, this week. And right now it's time for the children's message. So children, can you wave where you are so I can see you? Yeah? All right, come on up to the front. Come on up, come up. Yeah. <laughs> Slide. Sliding in. Did you see baseball? Yeah, I did, but now don't. No? No. All right. Well, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I want to talk to you about giving thanks today. And I know it's not Thanksgiving, but I want to talk to you about giving thanks because do we have to wait till Thanksgiving to give thanks? We can give thanks anytime and all the time, right? So... What I brought for us today is I brought some thank you cards, all right? And I'm going to read these thank you cards, and I'm going to show you these thank you cards. And I want you to tell me who you think this thank you card should go to. You needed, you needed a seat. That's what you needed. All right. Okay. Okay. So here's the first card, all right? It says, thanks a latte. And there's a picture of a coffee cup in front, right? Thanks a latte. Oh, yeah, you needed to get a seat too. All right, okay. And inside it says, just wanted to espresso my gratitude. Where do you think, who do you think this should go to? Mom? Your mom? Why your mom? You don't know. Does she love coffee? No? Oh, why, why would it go to your mom? <laughs> okay, so maybe it might go to somebody you want to say thank you and they really love lattes or coffee. My grandma. Your grandma? Does your grandma like coffee? Yeah, she does. Okay, so this would be a good card. Mom does. Your mom likes coffee? So this would be a good, good, good thank you card for you. Look. All right, Sam, look. It's a, it's a, okay, yeah, it's a coffee. All right. All right, he's talking with his mom right there. All right, here, here, here. 
This is a good coffee cup. Yeah, look at that. All right. Now here's, a, here's another one. It says, has a whistle in the front, and it says, Coach, you're the greatest. And inside, you got a coach, yeah? It says, Coach, you're the greatest. And inside it says, just wanted to take a time out to say thanks. So who do you think we should give this thank you card to? To your mom. <laughs> to your coach. To your mom. Yes. Your mom does so many different things. Yes. Here we go. For your mom. All right. Okay. And here's another one. This one. There's an American flag and there's an eagle in front and it says thank you on the bottom. You have an American flag? And it says... we've been to America flag. You've been to America flag? With mom. With mom. Yeah. Like six flags. Like, okay. All right. All right. So here's inside it says, Dear American Hero, this Independence Day our nation is again reminded of the tremendous sacrifices endured to ensure America's freedom. You've bravely and proudly carried the burden of defending this country and for that there are no words to express our gratitude because of you. This country remains the greatest nation on earth. May God bless you and may God bless America. Who do you think this would go to? A soldier. A soldier. Yeah? Right? Saying thank you. All right? And I got one last one for you. I don't know what this is. It looks like, what, what, what kind of animal is that? Bear. It's a bear? You sure? It's okay. A it's a dog. It's a dog. Is it a bear or is it a dog? It's a dog. It's a dog? Okay. It looks like a dog. It's a dog. It's it looks like a dog. Okay, but it's standing it up like, like a bear. Cooper. It looks like Cooper. Yeah. It's kind of like jaws. Oh, his jaw looks like Cooper? Yeah, he oh, okay. Has too. Okay. All right, so here's a card with a bear on it. And guess what? Ready? This is what it says. It says... I wanted to send you a thank you card that was so nice it would make you want to send me a thank you card for my thank you card. <laughs> and then I got really confused and my head started to hurt. Anyways, thanks. Who do you think this would go to? Me. You. <laughs> yeah, all right. So you can have this one too. All right, lots of thank you cards coming your way. All right, so when we want to be thankful, one of the ways we say thank you is we write a thank you card, right? Now, what can we do when we want to say thank you to God? How do we say thank you to God? We love God. We love God. How do we love God? What do we do to show that we love God? We pray for God. We pray for God? Okay, what else? We pray. We pray. What else do we do? We hold God. We hold God? We help God. What can we help God doing? Clean dishes. Clean dishes. That's a good one. Give me five. There you go. Yeah, you can help God clean dishes. Church. You do what? Go to church. Go, go to where? Church. church. Oh, you go to church. All right, that's one way. Yeah, you sing praise to God, and that's one way you can say you thank God. Right? There's a lot of ways we can thank God. We can help other people by washing dishes. We can help other people in various ways. But when we thank God... We gotta do something about it, right? We can't just feel it inside. We gotta say it. We gotta pray it. We gotta show it. We gotta do something, right? And that reminds me of a Bible verse. Let's read this together. Psalm 136 1. Ready? Get set. Go. Give, Give thanks to the Lord because he is good, his love endures forever. So, who can you thank this week? God. God, right? How are you gonna do it? Pray. How else are you going to do it? We go to church. Ask God for help. We ask God for help. How else? Share. Share. Yeah, church. Okay, all these things and more. And don't forget to wash dishes if your and parents say you okay. And you share church. Yeah, you tell other people about church too. Okay, so give thanks to God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Jesus, God, we thank you for all the wonderful things you do in our lives. Help us to give thanks to you by going to church, by sharing church, by helping other people, by praying, and by washing dishes. We thank you for all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, going off to Sunday school. We'll see you later. Now we get to share joys and concerns that we have so we can praise God and pray together as a community of faith for each joy that is shared. I'll say praise be to God. I invite you to say amen.
And for each concern, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayers. Please share your joys and concerns this morning. Joyce. All right, we are praising God for Woody undergoing a rare surgery that turned out really well. So praise God for that. Amen? Amen. 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 And we're praying for his recovery. Yes, Bob, all the way back there. Uh, I'd like to give a praise. Katie and I, son Sean, became engaged this week. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we were waiting for more details. <laughs> So, uh, Bob and Katie, their son Sean, were engaged this past week. Praise be to God. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. All the way back there. I'd like to give praise. Our great nephew, Grayson, had his open heart surgery. It was a really well. Um, he is actually now home. All right. Well, we're praising God for Grayson's open heart surgery having gone well, and he is now home. Praise be to God. Amen. 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 Yes, Gail. Next Aunt Mary is 98, and she was in the hospital for two weeks with uh, a urinary tract infection. Now she's in a rehab, and the prayer is for her actually to get back on her feet and be able to walk by herself. So Mary uh, was in the hospital, and then now is in rehab, and the prayer is for her to be able to walk on her two feet. To have some level of mobility. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayers. Yes, Mary. We praise God for the Trenton Thunder game yesterday. Uh, great shade, even though they lost. Um, and uh, we praise God for Haley getting engaged this week as well. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Austin. All right. We are praising God, for Austin's camping trip, everybody, it went well. Everybody's safe in good weather. Wonderful. Praise be to God. Amen. 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 Dean. We're praying for Dean's brother, Dan, uh, for recovery and uh, for safe travels for the trip he's going on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, Bill. We're praying for Marge, who has a knee replacement tomorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, Ginny. Please 
help yourself on your way out. It's L&M Buttercream. Well, Will there be cake when the actual baptism happens? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not trying to add any pressure. Yeah, it'll be a different cake. Cake or not, this is limited quantity, right, today. So enjoy. Thank you for providing that for us. Um, we are praying for Tricia, uh, for her inner ear issue. Uh, let's pray for her and for also the five people, uh, relatives and godparents who are involved in the baptism who tested positive for COVID. And we are praying uh, for them as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, John. We are praying for Janet's friend Audrey, uh, 91st birthday, celebrating that, um, praising God for that, but also she fell and broke her hip, so uh, we're praying for her recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Paramal. She passed her medical board exam, is that what you said? Parika passed her medical board exam. Wow. Praise be to God. Amen. 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 Okay, uh, just a few prayer requests from online. First of all, Kitty Newman says, My friend Natalie is still in need of many prayers as she fights her battle with metastatic cancer quickly spreading through her body. So we are praying for Natalie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, Ginny Tabist is uh, celebrating uh, Bob Morton's 90th birthday. So why don't we just give a huge round of applause so Bob can hear. Happy birthday, Bob! And then Carolina uh, asks for prayers for Josh's grandfather, Albert. Uh, He's just been read his last uh, rites after a massive heart attack. We are praying for Josh's grandfather, Albert. Lord, in your mercy. Here are our prayers. All right, let's take a moment to go to God in prayer for these things. God, we praise you this day for all of your blessings. We give thanks to you for Woody's surgery having gone well, and we pray for full recovery. We pray for Grayson after open heart surgery. We thank you that he's home, and we pray that he fully recovers. We thank you for being able to spend time together at the Trenton Thunder game, some of us. And we also praise you, O God, for Sean becoming engaged, for Haley becoming engaged. We pray, O God, that you would bless them in their significant others, in their marriages to come. We pray, O God, 
for uh, we praise you for Austin's camping trip with his buddies. We, pr we thank you for that and that blessing. We praise you for Parika passing our board exam. We praise you, O oh God, for Bob Morton's 90th birthday and for Audrey's 91st birthday. And we lift up to you, Mary, who's in rehab. We ask that you would restore her walking ability and mobility. We pray for Dan that he would recover fully and for safe travels for him and his brother. We pray for Marge for the knee replacement to go well and for Tricia, her inner ear issue to be resolved and all the friends and family who have COVID, uh, that the symptoms would not be terrible and that they would recover fully. We pray for Audrey that you would restore her hip. We pray for Natalie that you would strengthen her in her battle with cancer. And we ask, oh God, for Josh's grandfather, Albert, after a heart attack, I pray that he would remember and know that you are God, that you love him, and that there is faith and love and hope in Jesus Christ. We pray that Josh and Carolina there spending time with him also would remember that hope in Christ. And for their whole family, we pray that they also would remember that there is life everlasting in you. We thank you, God, for all of your blessings and all the ways in which you grow us through our challenges and all these things we give to you, those shared and those unspoken. As we give them to you, we pray that your will would be done as we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and praise him in every, please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has 
rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I recently received a thank you card for something that I had already forgotten about had happened. And I was not expecting a thank you card at all. But I tell you, when I got the card, it really made my day. All right, the rest of the day's challenges, they seemed a little lighter. I felt a little more hope. Things seemed more doable. And I also felt closer, relationally, with the person who sent me the card. Have you ever felt like I felt? A little bit, perhaps? You know, there's a lot of research out there that shows the power of giving thanks. When you think and you express gratitude, your stress levels can actually go down. Your anxiety levels can go down. Your mood can go up. Your mental fitness and well-being can be cultivated. And even your physical well-being can be positively affected all by giving thanks. But gratitude is also quite pleasurable for the person who receives the gratitude, right? You feel appreciated, you feel loved and recognized, and you feel closer with the person giving you that thanks, even if it's something really silly, like this quote I found on the internet. Mom, thank you for teaching me how to use the big potty. That has proven to be a valuable life skill. That's the whole quote. So we thank you, all parents today, who have taught us to use the big potty. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Mom, if you're watching. You know, over the last few weeks, we've been looking at examples of a life that is worthy of God and pleasing to God from Colossians chapter 1. And I've shared with you that the Apostle Paul, he wrote this letter to the Colossians because he was so thankful for them. He was thankful for their faith in Jesus Christ, and he was thankful that they were loving of all of God's people. But he told them that he kept praying for them because he knew, he knew that that was not it. Just like you would keep watering a plant after it sprouts because you know there's more for that plant. So he kept praying for the Colossian church. And Paul's prayer for them was that they would know God's will so that they could live a life worthy of God and pleasing to God. And I've been sharing with you that that kind of life, such a life as that, is what's next for you if you are a Christian. If you're not a Christian then I offer to you that what may be next for you is simply to get to know Jesus Christ. Get to know how awesome Jesus is, how loving He is, how much He loves you, His purpose that He had and His purpose for us. And I hope that as you get to know Him, you would fall in love with Him because He loves you and that you would put your trust and faith in Jesus Christ and follow Him. But if you are a Christian, you already believe in Jesus Christ. So the question is, what's next after that? Well, living a life that's worthy of God and pleasing to God is what's next. What's that life look like? I've shared with you a few examples already. And today, I want to share the last example with you from Colossians chapter 1. And it comes from verse 12, which says this. Giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. The bottom line simply is this. Your life, when you give thanks to God in everything because God has brought you into his kingdom, that's a life that's worthy of God and pleasing to God. I want to unpack that in three, sta- in three short ways as we look at that more closely. First of all, a life that pleases God is a life that gives thanks to God. I want you to notice verse 12 says, giving joyful thanks to the Father. There's a recipient of the gratitude here, and that recipient is one whom Paul calls the Father. He's talking about God. And this is significant for us because in our culture, sometimes it's popular to say, I'm grateful, I'm blessed, without referring to the cause of our gratitude or the source of our blessing, especially when it happens to be God. You know, we often think it's 
maybe not polite at times to bring up the subject of God in conversation. So we tend to drop God and we say, well, I'm blessed or I'm grateful. And sometimes in conversation, you may not need to bring up God. Other times in the culture we live in, we will give thanks to things like chance. That's what we're doing when we say, well, I was very lucky. We're giving credit to some random mix of happenings. Or we'll say things like, thank the universe, right? Like there's some impersonal thing out there giving us good things in life. Or we will just say we're feeling grateful without any particular recipient of our thanksgiving. But imagine somebody gave you a birthday gift. Wouldn't it be weird, or at least an incomplete gratitude of sorts, if you then just said, well, I'm lucky. Or you said you felt grateful. Or for your birthday gift, you gave credit to the universe. No, at the very least, what you would say is, I am lucky to have a friend like this who gave me this gift. You would tell them, right? You would feel more than thankful. A full expression of your gratitude would be to tell the giver of that gift, thank you, thank you for your love for me. Well, Paul here, he names a life of giving thanks to God. Right? The good in our lives ultimately can be traced back to the person of God. Not an impersonal force, not chance, a spin of the wheel or the throw of the dice, but God. And the rest of the Bible keeps saying this too. James 1.17, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. Psalm after psalm in the scriptures remind us, give thanks to God. What scripture is doing, I think, is it's reminding us that life's blessings, they are not chance, they are not luck, they are not some mysterious force in the universe any more than your children having a roof over their head and food on the table is the result of chance. No, you blessed them. And just like that, God has blessed you. So let us give thanks and let us give thanks to God. One way you can do that is to actually voice your thanksgiving to God for specific things in your life. You can tell God, thank you for watching over my kids, my grandkids, my great-grandkids. God, thank you for strengthening me yesterday to overcome the temptation or distraction I was facing so that I could stay true to you. God, thank you for giving me patience to deal with that incredibly difficult person just an hour ago. God, I thank you for your healing of my body today. You can voice your thanksgiving in prayer to God. Or if you're not the kind of person that likes to talk, you can grab a sheet of paper and a pen and write out your thanksgivings to God. Another practical way that you can give thanks to God is to make a financial gift in the worship of God in proportion to the blessing that God has given you so that the church can be equipped and resourced to share the love of God with others. You know what doing that is like? It's similar to you giving a cash gift or a gift card to a beloved family member saying, use this for whatever you need. And you do that, why? Because you're thankful for them and because you love them. I'm not sharing this application because we're in dire need, but it's a way for you to express your thanksgiving to God. Because you know how pleased you are when somebody thanks you. So a life that's worthy of God and pleasing to God is a life that gives thanks to God. Second, I offer to you that a life that pleases God is a life that gives thanks to God in everything. It's not a life where you give thanks occasionally when good things happen. It's not just that. Rather, it's a life that has ongoing gratitude in everything. And I get that from this. You see this phrase, giving joyful thanks, is connected to the previous phrase, which says this, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might so that you may have great patience, endurance, 
and patience. And we looked at that a little bit last week. That phrase is talking about situations where you need strength and power. You need some kind of help to get through the day. And so because the phrase of giving thanks and being strengthened are connected, I offer to you that a life of giving thanks, it's not just for when you have everything already, you're feeling strong and great. A life of giving thanks is also for when you're going through situations when you need strength, when you need help, all the ups and downs of life. Paul said something similar in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. He wrote, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And that's a powerful statement, isn't it? That it is God's will for you to give thanks in all circumstances. You might think to yourself, that's really insensitive on God's part. Wanting me to give thanks when I'm going through hard stuff. But if you consider the research about thanksgiving, it looks like what God wants to do in your life is to lead you into a life that's good for you emotionally, psychologically, mentally, even physically, helping you to grow in resilience even through hard stuff. God's will for us is to be grateful in everything for our good. It is good for us. And it's one of the ways that God expresses God's love for us to say, give thanks in everything. Now difficulty has a tendency to blind us to other things around us. It's a little bit like this. I don't know if you've noticed, but you probably noticed. You've noticed how glued we are to our screens nowadays, right? Our five-inch screens, we're just in them. There's so much to do there. People to text, things to respond to, emails to write, write questions to look up answers to, recipes to find, games to play, videos to watch, notifications to answer, books to read. I mean, it's amazing what's in your phone. It's not just for making calls. And you've got to do that too, right? There's so many things in that phone. It's endless. <coughs> But I've noticed that the more you get absorbed and, and absorbed into the five-inch screen, the less you notice everything else happening around you. I share that simply to say when we go through difficult times, those difficulties can take up all of our attention, can take up all the real estate in our minds and in our hearts and lead us to forget everything else, just like our five-inch screen. Giving thanks, even in difficulty, what it can do is it can help you to remember that there are still things for which you can give thanks. And as you do so, hope goes up, mood goes up, stress goes down, resilience goes up. So friends, let us live lives of giving thanks in every circumstance. And that does mean we give thanks for good things, because sometimes great things happen and we simply forget to give thanks. You can say grace before you eat every meal because every meal is a gift. Even if you yourself grew everything in your own garden that you eat, even if you raised the animals and slaughtered them for the meat that you eat, you did not provide the sunshine or the rain. Every meal is a gift. So give thanks. Develop a habit of giving thanks. There are various ways you can do that. I have one journal that asks me every day, list three specific things I'm thankful for. Actually, I think it's every week. List three specific things I'm thankful for. So give thanks in the good things, but this also means giving thanks in the midst of difficult things. And sometimes you give thanks for the difficulty. Right? Because you know God uses hardship whether God gives it directly to you or some, it comes from somewhere else and God redeems it, God uses hardship to bring about good in our lives. So sometimes you can give thanks for the difficulty as you go through it. 
Not always. Some hardships are so mind-boggling at first that frankly, emotionally, it's too hard to give thanks at the beginning. Yet we can always give thanks in the middle of them for the good that is already in our lives. Even when you're struggling, you can still say, God, I am grateful because it is not always like this. As you give thanks in every circumstance, so your children and grandchildren will learn to do the same. Friends, what do you need to give thanks for today? Thanks to God for today. It is a life that thanks God in everything that is a life worthy of God and pleasing to God. Third, a life that pleases God is a life that gives thanks to God because God has brought you into his kingdom. And verse 12 to 14, it says this again, giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. The first two things I shared with you about giving thanks, giving thanks in everything and giving thanks to God, they are implications from that first few words, giving joyful thanks to the Father. But this third part about how God brings you into his kingdom and we give thanks for that, that is the main focus of these verses of Paul's example here of giving thanks. Paul is telling the Christians in Colossae that you guys give thanks for what God has done in bringing you into his kingdom. And I offer to you that what he wrote to Christians back then still applies to Christians today. Because if you consider yourself a Christian, a believer and follower of Christ, the one thing, the main thing, for which you can always give thanks to God for, no matter what you're going through, is this. God has brought you into his kingdom by grace and love through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. What does that mean, though? Please follow me on this. According to what Paul writes here, in our lives there are two kingdoms or dominions. Now, a kingdom or dominion is defined by who's in charge and what kind of influence that person brings. So, each one of you have a kingdom at home, right? Where you are in charge. Where your spouse is in charge and you're renting the place. But you have a kingdom, a part, something in your home, something in your life where you are in charge and everything is influenced by the influence you bring. You pick the colors at home, your furnishings, your decorations, the, the tchotchke, the little things that you put around to remind you of your family and friends. This is all you. This is your kingdom. And each kingdom has a culture, a way of doing things. You have a family cu culture. Your family has a, a particular type of people, a particular value system, right? Work hard, play hard, worship hard. That might be a value system that you have in your family, right? So each kingdom has a different way of doing things. And you might have experienced this outside of your family. You work at one company, you know it has a culture, has a way of doing things. You go to a different company, you might be doing the exact same kind of work, but you know you're in a different place. A different kingdom, so to speak. And so, according to Paul, in this world, in our lives, there's a dominion of darkness and a kingdom of light. The dominion of darkness is where evil, selfishness, sin is in charge and influences all things. There may be some good there. Because God created all things and his fingerprints are everywhere. But the dominion of darkness is where everybody's main orientation of life is away from God, influencing other people to be away from God. The kingdom of light, Paul says, is the kingdom of the Son God loves or Jesus Christ. And the kingdom of light is where Jesus is king. Meaning that Jesus, His love, His goodness, His grace, His truth, His presence is what's in charge and influences all things. Everybody's main orientation in the kingdom of light is towards God. There are other things happening, sure, but everybody's main orientation is towards God, influencing other people towards God as well. 
Now the way to be a part of the kingdom of light is you got to be holy like God is holy. And this is what Paul tells the Colossians in verse 21. He says, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. He's telling them, you know what? You guys were, main orientation was away from God. In your own minds, you were apart from God. And because you were oriented away from God, because you were oriented in your minds away from God, your behavior was not of God. God was not king of their lives. Sin was king. Self was king. Sin led them away from God, breaking relationship with Him, just like it does in every relationship. And so they were part of the dominion of darkness, and they were not qualified to be a part of the kingdom of light. But what does God do? Verse 22, Paul continues, But now He has reconciled you to Christ's physical body, by Christ's physical body, through death, to present you holy in His sight, without blemish and free from accusation. When the Colossians were not holy, they could not do anything to qualify themselves for God's kingdom. God qualified the Colossians for them. He reconciled them through the death of His Son on a cross to forgive them of their sin, to make them holy in His sight. He rescued them from the dominion of darkness and brought them into the kingdom of Jesus. And Paul is telling them, that's what God did for you. And so you can always give thanks for that. I don't know if you've heard this story before, but there's an old story of prisoners of war in the Far East during World War II. They were forced into manual labor in the harsh climates with very little food and having such limited resources under such punishing heat required to do work over and over again just to save their lives. The result was the whole environment was each man for himself. Nobody thought about other people, the sick, the dying. They barely had anyone caring for them. It was a dominion of darkness, every person for themselves. At the end of one day, their captors counted the shovels that they had been using and found that one was missing. The captors told the POWs that they would all die unless the person who stole the shovel would reveal themselves. After a while of continuous threats, one person did come forward, and when he said he stole the shovel, he was killed on the spot. Soon afterwards, the captors counted the shovels again and found that none of the shovels were missing. They had counted wrong. News of the innocent man dying for everybody spread around the camp and everyone began treating each other better, sharing the little food that they got, caring for one another, the sick and the dying. The war was soon going to be over and we know that, but until then, a kingdom of light had been born in the middle of that darkness because of the sacrifice of one person. And if you can wrap your mind around that, then you're beginning to get what Paul says God did for the Colossians, that God gave His Son to rescue the entire, or people in the Colossian church out of the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of light. And what God did for the Colossians, friends, God did for you and for me. God loves you and wants to, you to be a part of his kingdom, close with him forever. But the fact is, sin leads us away from God and it leaves us in the dominion of darkness, not part of the kingdom of light. God in his love offers us forgiveness, restoration and relationship with him, redemption and holiness and a part in his kingdom forever, not because of how good you are, but because of how good Jesus is. He died for you and for me on a cross and rose from the dead to pay for our sins so we could be restored in relationship with God and be a part of His kingdom forever. And if you're a Christian, 
You already believe this. You already trust in Jesus, that he has rescued you from darkness and brought you into relationship with him. The result is you're part of his kingdom, and Jesus is your king. Sin is not your leader. Self is not your leader. God is your leader. And if God is your leader, then you are under the influence of all of God's goodness. Because Jesus is in charge of your life. Just like in your kingdom, you influence all things. If you're in God's kingdom, God influences all things. And if you're in God's kingdom, you influence other people towards what is good and what is godly. Because Jesus is in charge of your life. And that goodness of God influencing your life is daily pushing out of you all the not-so-good stuff that has built up over the years of living in a dominion of darkness. One day, God's goodness is going to push out all the not-so-good things in this world when he fixes everything up, restores all things. In the meantime, if you're a part of God's kingdom... God's good influence is upon your life. And the question is, will you receive it and follow it? You know, there's nothing that could separate you from the goodness and love of God for you. The one thing that could separate you from God, your sin, God took care of on the cross. So nothing can separate you from God. Even when you're faced with the ultimate challenge of death, you can know and you can trust when your life is slipping away and everything you knew on earth is slipping away, you still have Jesus Christ. And Jesus still has you, always. And if you can say that in death, I still have Jesus. There is nothing in this world that could get in the way of you giving thanks to God. If you're not a Christian, then I offer to you that these incredible blessings of being part of God's kingdom, you're invited to be a part of that by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. If you find yourself in darkness today, I want you to know that God still rescues people from darkness. If you find yourself in sin, I want you to know that God still forgives. If you find yourself feeling far apart from God. I want you to know that God makes himself near to you. And if you find yourself thinking, well, I'm not enough, I could never be a part of God's kingdom, then I want you to know that God has given his son Jesus and that through faith in him, you are enough. I invite you to put your faith in Jesus if you have not already. And you can do that by praying something like, Jesus, I don't want life without you. I want life with you now and forever. Please forgive me of my sin and help me to follow you each day. If you pray that for the first time or for the first time in a long time, tell somebody about that. Tell me, join a church family to follow Jesus with other people. You can put into practice one of the practical applications I've shared with you already. Pray before meals, pray Thanksgiving prayers, make financial gifts in worship to God, write down your Thanksgiving in a journal, just develop that habit. One thing we can all do together is for each of us to make a commitment to be a regular part of a church family if you're not already. The church family is a reflection of the fact that you're part of God's kingdom, you're not alone. You're with others in God's kingdom. So join a church family regularly, and the way that you can give thanks to God is that you can do it with others too, not just by yourself. And let me tell you one of the most powerful ways that the church gives thanks to God is when we sing together. And I tell you, church, hearing you sing together is one of the most beautiful sounds I hear every Sunday morning. You are such a gift. 
I'm so thankful for you. And I'm so proud and honored to be your pastor and to be singing with you each and every Sunday. It's a beautiful, beautiful sound. You know what you singing together reminds me of? It reminds me of this story from the Bible about a guy named King Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. And when Judah was faced with overwhelming odds, overwhelming enemies, do you know what Jehoshaphat did? He got on his knees. And before all of God's people, the king said, God, we don't know what to do. Imagine, the leader of all the people said, we don't know what to do. But he also said, our eyes are on you, O God. And God inspired a prophet to say this, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged by the vast army, because the battle is not yours, the battle belongs to God. Stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. And do you know what King Jehoshaphat did? He sent out the army to face the enemy, not to fight, but simply to stand firm. And after talking with all the people, with the agreement of the people, get this, he put people to sing to God in front of the army. God's people, do you hear me? Put the praise team in front of the soldiers. And do you know what the praise team sang? They sang these words, Give thanks to the Lord, for His love endures forever. In the middle of hardship, difficult circumstances, life-threatening circumstances, enemies coming together to take them out, the praise team sings, Give thanks to God. Why? Because His love endures forever. And so you and I, we can give thanks to God in everything, in every situation we face. Why? Because He brought us into His kingdom with His love. Amen? Amen. And I close. He uses a special device to use his phone. And this past week, he sent out a group text message. In that message, he said, I want to thank everybody for your prayers, for the cards, for the visits, for the concerns. And he asked for continued prayers for his recovery so that he might one day walk into church to worship God with his church. And on his behalf, I want to thank you, church, for your prayers for him, for your cards. In the midst of her own formidable pain, she continues to take care of him. He's a quadriplegic every day. And my dad, in the midst of all the things he's going through, he's telling me basically he's thankful for my mom. I have no better example than them 
of those who give thanks to God in all circumstances, surrounded by a community of faith that reflects God's kingdom. And so I want to invite you and challenge you to live a life of giving thanks to God in all things, especially because no matter what you're going through, if you have given your life to Jesus, you are a part of His kingdom kingdom. So give thanks to God. That is a life worthy of God and pleasing to God. Amen. 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 Please close your eyes with me for a second. I want to invite you in this moment to give thanks to God for specific things, whatever they may be, however silly they may be. Just take a brief moment to say to God, thank you. God, you tell us to give thanks in all circumstances. Not because you're insensitive to the things we go through, but because it is for our good. And so we give thanks to you, God, in the midst of everything that every single person in this room is going through. We give thanks to you for the people you've placed around us, who care for us, who love us, who pray for us. We give thanks to you for the church family, providing us with love and care and a reflection of your love to us. We thank you for the random strangers who are kind to us, and we thank you for the innumerable, uncountable blessings that we don't know about. Just like God, we have done so many things for others that they do not know. So God, you do so many things for us that we have no clue. You do. So we thank you for what we do know. We thank you for what we don't. We thank you for the good things, the blessings, the people around us. The faith that you've given in your son Jesus. And we thank you for the difficult things that have taught us to rely on you, that give us compassion for other people, that help us to know that though we may feel alone, we are never alone. God, we thank you in the midst of difficulties we face. You know how hard it is for us to sometimes give thanks because we're so shocked by the things we go through. But even in the midst of them, we thank you, O God, for it has not been and it will not be always like this. I pray, O God, for every single person in this room that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit to give thanks to you each day to live this life that's worthy of you and pleasing to you, not to score points with you, O God, but because you have fully demonstrated already your amazing love to us by giving us your Son. We give thanks to you, O God, and we pray for those around us and even for some of us who may not know you, Jesus, who are discovering you, Jesus, that, O God, that those who do not know you would come to know you and become a part of your kingdom forever. We thank you, O God, for this day you've given. And we pray again that you continue to fill us with thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The act of giving offering is an expression of faith. It's one way we say thank you and we love you. And I invite you to give. Uh, you can give electronically on our, through our website on Tithely or PayPal. You can put your offering in an envelope and put it in the box in the back. 
uh, or you can mail your offerings to the church. I invite you to keep doing that, and I want to thank you each and all uh, who continue to do that in various, various ways. If you are here in person, I invite you to stand as we sing our closing song together. my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day long I invite you to lift your hands like this Lord God, we lift our hands to you to give our lives to you as they are. We can come no other way. So we give to you our celebrations and praises. And we give to you our burdens, our struggles, and our failures. And we ask, O oh God, that you would take it all and you would weave something beautiful together out of them for your glory and for our good. We pray that as we go forth from this place, our hearts and our minds would be full of your Holy Spirit, our bodies, our souls full of who you are, so that we might overflow in gratitude and gratefulness, and so that we might be for the world the light of the world that this broken world sorely needs. I pray, O oh God, for those of us who are broken, that you would heal us and strengthen us so that we might minister and serve the world, so that others might also know of your healing, of your grace, of your truth, of your justice, of your love, your goodness, and your presence. Please fill us with your Holy Spirit and bless us so that all that is possible. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, everybody.